Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and a lot of you are curious about the yoga book, so I got one in here for us to take a look at. This is the Android version of this two-in-one tablet, and as you can see here, it's got a lower portion with a keyboard, but there are no physical keys. It's just a, a capacitive surface. This is not a second screen, though. That's the important thing to note as we're going through the rest of the review here. There's also a Windows version available, too, uh, for a little more money. We'll get into all the specifics in just a second, but I do want to mention in the interest of the full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo, so when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's get into the hardware now. This one is running with Android. It costs about $499 as you see it. Uh, there's also a Windows version, but uh, both of these have the same hardware inside. The Windows version costs an extra $50 or so, probably for the license, but uh, you do get your choice of operating systems, but when you buy it, you're locked into that uh, OS when you get it. But again, otherwise they run on the same guts. 10.1-inch uh, Full HD IPS display, 1920 by 1200. Really nice, crisp, and sharp display. Display uh, looks really good, especially because you're packing so many pixels into a very small space there. Intel Atom X5Z8550 processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage. There's an SD card slot over here to augment some of that storage too, so you can go up to 128 gigabytes if you wish. Uh, and it has wireless AC built in too. Uh, you also have your USB port here, HDMI output there for connecting to an external display. Uh, you've got some speaker grills on both sides here, along with a, a volume rocker and a headphone jack too, along with the power switch here. And you'll see again, there's no keys on this, and this is pretty helpful for when you go into its other two-in-one modes. Uh, so you have on the uh, hinge here, the standard yoga design, a really nicely designed hinge that uh, is very flexible and uh, tends to stay put. So no matter where you put the screen, it tends to stay there, which is something I really like about uh, Lenovo's hinge design, which they've carried over to this one. Uh, you can run it in display mode like this. You can put it into tent mode if you want. And then of course you can put it into straight up tablet mode. And because you have no keys on the keyboard, it doesn't feel as bulky as uh, many other two-in-one tablets with keyboards feel. That comes at the cost of actually typing comfort because you don't have any keys to touch. There's no tactile feedback really on this. But uh, if you are an occasional keyboard user, uh, it's nice that the keyboard here can get uh, placed out of the way because it's completely flat uh, and doesn't really add a lot of bulk to it when it's in tablet mode. So it feels a lot more natural as a tablet. But it's not as natural as a laptop. And that's one of the trade-offs you make when you buy one of these two-in-ones. Typically with the Yogas, especially the, runs, the ones running Windows, the larger ones, uh, they're very good laptops and they're kind of a passable tablet. Uh, this is a better tablet than it is a laptop because of the keyboard here. There is just simply nothing to feel as you're typing and I've had a really hard time uh, getting used to this as I'm going. So if I'm looking at the keyboard and being uh, very deliberative in how I am uh, pushing my keys, uh, I can get decent amount of accuracy to it, but I am a habitual touch typer. I normally type uh, just by feeling my way on the keyboard, finding that home row, and then looking at the screen as I type. I am really looking down at the keyboard, and because I never look at the keyboard, I'm having a very hard time getting used to this. So I think if you have a lot of text to type out, and you don't normally look at uh, the keyboard as you type, you're going to have a very hard time adjusting to this keyboard. There's just nothing to feel on it. It does give you some vibration and haptic feedback as you're typing, uh, but it's vibrating the entire surface, so you really don't get a good amount of tactile feel to the keyboard. So I think if you're somebody who hunt and pecks or uh, looks down at the keyboard all the time while you're typing, uh, you should have a decent experience with it, but for those of us who are touch typers, uh, you'll probably not uh, really want to do a lot of typing on this. So maybe in the future they'll put some bumps or something on the surface here so you can at least find your way back to the home row. I think if they had that, uh, that might give me a little bit of a, of a directional uh, idea as to where my fingers should be if I lose uh, track of where they are, uh, and that might help me a little bit. But right now I'm not too uh, crazy about this uh, keyless keyboard uh, for typing. Now because they're trying to replicate the feel of a laptop, there's also a trackpad area of this virtual keyboard as well right down here. I think on the Windows version they drew a rectangle around that area. For some reason on the Android one uh, they just have these dots to delineate where it is. But it works like a mouse. You can go ahead and uh, select text and do all the things you would normally do with a mouse on an Android or Windows device. Again, it does feel kind of weird not having physical buttons to push, but that's just me. Uh, so you do have that as another option on your laptop mode. Now a cool thing happens though when you push on this little uh, pen icon here. So I'm going to hit that. 
the laptop vibrates and the keyboard disappears because we are now in drawing mode and there's a stylus that they give you in the box and a little app here will pop open and you can start uh, writing stuff out on the keyboard surface now and you'll get a note that will appear on here. Now you can make this go away and go back to typing in your other application and it will store this note for you later uh, or you can click on that and uh, jump into the full note taking application here. So for example, I could uh, select a different color perhaps. Let me do the yellow here and then I can start drawing here on the surface of the keyboard and that will translate to the screen and they track pretty nicely here. So you can see this cursor moving around here. Uh, there's pretty much a one-to-one -one, uh, representation on the surface as to where the pen will be on screen. So it's not hard to get used to this and figure out uh, where you want your pen to go as you're writing here. And it does, uh, it does ignore the wrist, which is good. Uh, there is some degree of pressure sensitivity on here. So I can draw a faint line if I give it just a little bit of pressure or something darker if I push down harder. But uh, it seems like there's only like two modes of this. It's either light or it's dark. There's really not any kind of uh, nuance to it like I saw with the Apple Pencil. So it's good for doing some basic stuff. I'm not sure for artists if this is going to cut it, um, but it does. Uh, it is kind of a unique experience to get that kind of Wacom tablet feel on something if you don't like drawing on a screen. Now what's really cool is that this also supports Lenovo's AnyPen technology. So you can take out a pencil, for example, and just start drawing with uh, things that you normally would draw with on paper on your screen. And uh, we looked at this about a year and a half, two years ago on one of their Windows tablets. Same idea, you can take out just about any utensil, like even a fork will uh, write on the screen. It's pretty cool when you turn that on. But you gotta be careful not to use those utensils on the uh, keyboard surface here as you will scratch and damage it. So you definitely want to make sure if you put the AnyPen technology on that you are only any penning uh, on your screen and not on your uh, keyboard surface here. Now, if you prefer to keep your notes on paper, they have thought of that as well. They give you a pad of paper in the box with a, a special magnetized little holder here for the paper pad that will uh, connect securely to the device here so you can fold it up and carry it around with you and it doesn't slide around at all as you're writing on it. Now, the problem though, even though you get a nice pad of paper here to write on, is that your stylus just has a capacitive tip for uh, working with that keyboard surface. So if I write out here on the paper, uh, you can see that I get stuff on the screen but nothing on the paper. So what they did to solve this problem is is uh, rather than come up with some mechanical way to deal with it, they want you just to pop out uh, the capacitive tip here, just with the cap, just like so. You kind of work it out like that. And they give you a couple of ink cartridges in the uh, box that you slide in like so and use the cap to kind of seat them in place. Uh, and then you can start writing here. So if I start uh, writing out on the next line here, you can see I'm getting uh, ink on paper as well as ink on the screen, which is cool. But the problem, of course, is that you don't want to then take the pad off and write on the virtual surface because you will definitely scratch it up in the process. So this is something where you're going to have to uh, not lose these little <laughs> tips here uh, as you're uh, writing on your device. So what you have to do when you're done with the paper is uh, go back over here, pull out the little tip, uh, put the capacitive tip back in, and then uh, you can go back to using the virtual, the virtual space to write on versus the paper space. But I just feel it's very inelegant for something so elegant in its design. Maybe to have uh, some kind of mechanical way to switch between the points uh, would have been a better solution to this other than having these little cartridges floating around that you are going to most likely lose uh, in the process of switching between paper and virtual paper. And as a tablet, it does function very well. It's not a powerhouse per se, but it is a lot more powerful perhaps than other uh, Android tablets that are out there. It's got that Intel Atom chip, which does uh, provide a lot of CPU horsepower and some decent graphics, as you can see here too. We're running the uh, Epic Citadel demo, which lets you walk through a pretty graphically intense village here. So you get a little bit of lag, but a uh, really nice experience overall. And I think for uh, just about every casual game you throw at it, it should do just fine. And uh, just about any app that you download from a productivity standpoint or movie movie watching standpoint uh, should also work very nicely on here because of that Intel hardware. On the 3 d Mark slingshot test, we get a score of 2009, which puts it in a pretty good place. So uh, not too bad on the performance side there. Of course, the uh, king of Android tablet gaming at the moment still remains the NVIDIA Shield K1 tablet, uh, but you can see just where that Intel chip falls into line with uh, other similar Android devices out there. Uh, the Windows device I would expect to perform pretty well too. We've tested Atom-based Windows devices quite a bit on this channel. Uh, good for productivity apps for, for sure, but not so great uh, for gaming overall. So that is the Yoga Book, and I really cannot recommend this as a laptop replacement, as cool as it looks, because this keyboard is so hard to work with. If you're somebody that doesn't type a lot, maybe, but uh, generally you're not going to have a very good typing experience on here because you can't feel the keys, and that is the uh, biggest drawback with it. Now, if they were to add bumps to the keyboard, uh, they would kill off its most intriguing feature to me, which is 
how nice it works as a drawing surface because I know a lot of artists like to use those Wacom tablets where you have a tablet device that translates your pen movements onto the screen. Uh, this does it in a single unit. And on the Windows version, although it doesn't have a lot of RAM or a lot of computing horsepower, it is enough to do some basic illustration and some basic work in Photoshop and Illustrator and other drawing applications. And you get that Wacom functionality in something you can take with you. And that, to me, is kind of intriguing for artists. So I think that might be something that if you are an artist, you might want to check out although you may want to try and use one in person before you buy it just to make sure the accuracy feels like it's there for you. I'm not an artist, so I'm not uh, familiar with how those Wacom tablets typically work on a larger computer, but I kind of like this concept and I think that might be something worth considering. So I'd love to see where they go with this concept next. One of the great things about Lenovo is they try stuff and they're not afraid of failing. They just release a whole bunch of products and see what sticks and I think this might uh, have some life to it for uh, people who like to draw uh, more than for people who need to type a lot. So We'll see where that develops. One of the cool things that I thought this was going to be when I first saw it on a website was uh, that this was going to be a separate screen, which would have been really cool to have dual displays. And maybe as technology improves, uh, that might be something we see in the near future, because that would be really cool to have a two-display tablet that would give you uh, some really cool options for functionality. So stay tuned. We'll see what they come up with next. That's the Yoga Book, and this is Lon Seipen. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.